Alright. So parametric equations, all right? The kind of the the origin of this, right, is so we are familiar um with using one equation <coughs> with two variables. So, for example, a typical kind of like equation, like a, oh, welcome. Okay. So, for example, if we talk about, uh, you know, for example, here, if I talk about like the uh, flight path of a ball, um, you know, that is propelled into the air. at a 45 degree angle with initial velocity of well, let's see here, 48 feet per second. Okay, and that's modeled by the equation y equals negative x squared over 72 plus x. Okay, something like that. Okay. So that's something that's familiar to us, right? And this this equation, right, if you believe it or not, okay, in in you know the universe, we don't really talk, we don't really, we never really name this kind of equation in the way that we talk about where it's only defined by two variables, the y and the x's. Okay, um, y and x. When you when you find like the coordinate of something using those two numbers, y and x, where x is like the left and the right, and y is up and the down, that's called rectangular coordinates. We never gave a name to it because you never had to differentiate it from anything else. Okay, we just we just said, oh, it's the y and the x. That's how you graph things. But in fact, there are other ways to graph things, and so. You know, now we're going to name this thing. So this is, these are, you know, x and y, those are rectangular coordinates. Okay, and then so this is a rectangular equation, rectangular equation because it's defined using those x and y coordinates. Okay. So the convenience, right, so the use, the utility of this kind of equation is that we have an x value and a y value. What does the y value describe in this particular, you know, equation? What would, what would the y value describe in this particular equation here? Any idea? If, and it's not a trick question here. I mean, just like, if, you were, if we were to graph this, and maybe I should, you know, Maybe I'll just go ahead and graph on my calculator here. So negative x squared over 72 plus x. <coughs> okay, and of course, we're talking about the flight path of a ball. So I should probably do something like this, and then I don't know. Maybe. Okay, let me do this thing. Let's see here. 30. Okay. So I graph that, and you can't see because it's too dark. There we go. Okay. And so if this is the flight path, this is the flight path of that object, okay? So what are these y values here describing? The what of the object? The height, exactly right. And then what about the x values? What are they talking about? Again, this is the flight path. The x values would be describing how far, okay, that object is from its initial position, right? So the use of this, right, is that these x and y's here, they describe where the object is, but what they don't tell you is, like, when 
the object is at that location, right? They don't tell you when. And so we could add in a third variable here if we wanted to, to um, help us describe this particular situation. In fact, that's what we do, okay? So sometimes, Okay, and in, in general, that third variable for parametric equations, the third variable is t. Okay, anyone want to guess what the typical meaning of t is? Yeah, yeah. Time, exactly right, okay? So parametric equations take your positions, your horizontal and vertical positions, and we're going to rewrite them individually as a function of time, okay, or as a, as a relate and as they relate to time, okay, and so so sometimes we have need of a third variable t, okay, and we write x and y as a function of t. So for example, you might see something like this. X is equal to f of t. So x is some function of time, that horizontal position. Okay. So again, just instead of describing this thing as as horizontal position and vertical position, because if you remember like talking about variables, right? We talked about like in the past you guys talked about like independent and dependent variables, right? In this case, the x right, is the independent variable typically, right, and, well, not in this case, in most cases, x is the independent variable, y is the dependent variable, but it doesn't really make sense to talk about the, um, the horizontal distance, right, is independent, and the y, uh, the, the height is dependent, right, it doesn't really make sense to talk about the horizontal distance, sorry, the vertical distance, that height being dependent on that horizontal distance, that doesn't make sense, but instead we can rewrite the horizontal and vertical, you know, lengths or measurements as functions of time, which does make a little more sense, okay? So anyway, and we can also say y equals, and we'll just use a different function, obviously, because the horizontal function is probably going to be different than the vertical function there in this case, okay? And so these two things are going to be parametric equations. Okay? <coughs> what makes them parametric equations, okay, um, that's because t is known as the parameter. Okay, so t is known as the parameter. So we're basically just introducing a third variable here on which both our x and y coordinates depend. <coughs> Okay, and so that's new to us, but the good news is, right, x and y, okay, or f of t comma g of t, okay, those are still, it's, it's still an ordered pair, on the coordinate plane. So the good news is we're still going to be graphing, um, you know, x, y points. We're still going to be graphing x, y points, except instead of plugging in an x and getting out a y, now we're going to be plugging in a t and getting both an x and a y value. We'll plug t into f to get an x coordinate, and then we'll plug that same t into y to get the matching y coordinate. Okay? So rather than having one formula here where we plug in some x's and get the matching y values and then graph the coordinates that way, instead we're going to have some t values and we'll plug those t values into both f and g, okay, simultaneously, so like t equals 1, we'll find f of 1 and g of 1, and that will be how we get the x and y coordinate that we will then graph. That's the idea, okay? <coughs> but it allows us to really show the more accurate relationship that rather than the horizontal distance and the vertical distance, rather than the vertical height, depending on that horizontal distance, it makes more sense to talk about both of them depend on time, 
how long, how far you are in the you know flight path, how long it's been you know in the air for, stuff like that. Okay, <coughs> so <coughs> let's take a look at what it would look like to graph a pair of parametric equations, or a graph of parametric equations here. So example, let's graph the parametric equations here. All right, and so we're going to have x equals t squared plus t, and y will equal 2t plus 1. So again, rather than y depending on x, rather than y being dependent on x here, both x and y depend on t, the time. Okay? And so to graph these things, rather than trying to like, you know, just go ahead and straight up graph them because we have to, we have to, we, our x and y have two different relationships here. We're going to go back to what we've done in the past when you first learn how to graph things and we're going to make a table. <coughs> and let's just make a table for t values between negative 2 and 2. make a table here for t values between negative 2 and 2. All right, and again, we'll do like integer values. So we'll have t be um, negative 2, then negative 1, then 0, then 1, then 2. I'm going to do a horizontal table here. Okay, and then x, y. So now we're going to find the points, the location of this, you know, particular thing, this object, maybe a particle or something like that. Okay, we'll find the location of this thing in the two dimensions, right, at particular times. So, for example, at time t equals negative 2, what's the x-coordinate? Well, I'm going to take that negative 2, square it, okay, so it gives me 4, um, plus a negative 2 is going to be 2. So at negative 2, my x-coordinate will be a 2. Okay, again, just plug the t value in there. Plug the t value into my x, you know, kind of coordinate there. I can try and squeeze it in here. Let's see if I can do that. Negative 2 squared plus negative 2. It kind of fits. Okay, if you want to just kind of see the work there, right? And then for my y value, we'll plug that t equals negative 2 in for the t here. So it'll become 2 times negative 2 plus 1. Well, that's negative 4 plus 1, so it's negative 3. So now I have a coordinate. I can plot that. Well, we can plot that to the point 2, negative 3. <coughs> okay, questions so far on anything? Okay, so let's try negative 1 here. Okay, again, we'll plug negative 1 in for our x um, parameter here. So let's see here or for the t. So um, negative 1 squared plus negative 1. So negative 1 squared is positive 1, plus negative 1 will be 0 for my x-coordinate there. And let's see here, plug it in for the y, it'll be 2 times negative 1 plus 1. So it's negative 2 plus 1, which is negative 1. <coughs> All right. <coughs> Do another one. So let's plug in 0, it'll be 0 squared plus 0, so it's going to be 0. And then 2 times 0 plus 1, which is 1. All right. Go ahead and do the last pieces of that table there. See what you come up with. So go ahead and do the last parts of that table. And try and get the last remaining cells there.
So hopefully you got something like that. 0.23 and 0.65. So now we have a set of ordered pairs, right? We have the 0.2, negative 3. We have the 0, 0.0, negative 1. We have the 0, 0.01. We have the 0.23. And we have the 0.65. <coughs> okay. So let's take those points and let's graph them on the no on our on our coordinate plane here, on our rectangular coordinate using our rectangular coordinates. So, let's see what this is going to look like here. Okay, so there's my x and y axis. Get a different colored pen here now. Okay, and so then we'll just plot our points. Once you have your kind of your axes drawn here, let's just plot our points. So we have the point two, negative three. So one, two, three. There it is, right there that point, okay? And in addition to plotting that point, right, so that point gives us information about the x and y, but there's one other piece of information that's not being graphed here, and the fact is that at this point, we're at time t equals negative 2. So in addition to plotting the point, which tells me locationally, you know, where we are, I'm also going to put here when we are. t equals negative 2. So for that, that point is true when the parameter is t equals negative 2. Okay, now we'll do the next one. 0, okay, negative 1. So there's that point right there. Okay, and so we are there when, when t is negative 1. So t equals negative 1. Okay, so now we know where we are and when we are there. I feel like Doc Brown or something like that on Back to the Future. Okay. All right, then the point zero one, and we are there at time t equals zero, and then two three two one two three at time t equals one, and then six five one two three four five six one two three four five something like that, and that's a t equals 2. <coughs> okay. And so now we're going to connect the dots. Okay, and we connect the dots in order of time. So negative 2 to negative 1. we got to get back to 0 here, so we're going to have to like curve out, but probably curve back in, right? and then 0 to 1, and then 1 to 2. Okay. Because we have this third kind of element here, this, this parameter of time, we not only have like locationally points, but we also have kind of like a flow, right? Time tends to flow, you know, forward, right? We can't really go back in time, at least not yet. So um, time can flow forward. So we want to indicate here the direction. We kind of have a, di of a, a direction in which we're, we're graphing, right? And so we draw along this arrows to indicate that we're actually headed in that direction. And if you want, you can kind of, you know, like continue the behavior like we're used to doing, but just make sure you put arrows pointing in the correct direction. Okay, so you can kind of, you, can, you know, you can kind of like draw beyond what we've plotted, but now we have a direction to it. Okay, and that direction is um, specifically known as the orientation. Okay, so let me put that down here. Okay. So the orientation of this graph 
It's just the direction or movement of the path. The direction or movement of the path. As we talk about, we talk about the orientation of our graph there. Okay? Questions on any of that? <coughs> All right. Now, <coughs> believe it or not, we can actually use our graphing calculators to graph these. Okay, so if you get your graphing calculators out. <coughs> All right. Does anyone not have a graphing calculator? So have a spare if you need one. Okay. And this is where it gets more interesting because you can, you know, the graphing calculator, as a piece of technology, you can manipulate things a lot more easily and see the results as opposed to having like them graph at each time you want to do it. <coughs> okay, so to graph this here, we're going to first of all press the mode button. Okay, right now, uh, the way your calculator's mode is set is to function, and that's the way that you know you're using the rectangular coordinates and you're only graphing functions. But um, we can change it. If you arrow over, you see the PAR parametric, okay? And then if you want to, you know, get a pr sneak preview of what we're doing tomorrow and Friday, that's going to be polar, P-O-L. And again, we'll talk about that, um, you know, on those days, but not right now. So parametric for right now. If you go to your Y equals, it's changed, right? You'll notice now that each kind of graph that you have, right? So there's a single line here, but it's got a pair of equations that you have to write. So you're going to write x sub 1 with respect to t and then y sub 1 with respect to t. So in this case, we're going to type in t squared plus t. And if you go to press your x variable here, it's now a t. Okay, you can see that's why it has x comma t comma theta comma n. Those are, they change with depending on the mode your calculator is set in. So t squared, okay, plus t for the x1 of t and then t 2t plus 1 <coughs> for the y1 of t. Okay. Now, if we just go and graph this straight up, oh, I, I adjusted things here. Okay. You only get that part of it. Okay. Uh, you only get this piece. So we only get to see kind of like the piece right here of our graph. So how can we see the rest of it? Well, if you go to your... Um, I think window, there we go. You can see here that the minimum t value that was graphed was zero, but we graphed t values between negative two and two. So instead of going from zero to 6.28, where that is, we'll go from negative two to two, and let's make our step, p step one, and see what happens there. I think it should still be okay. There's the piece of graph that we have graphed. Now, it doesn't show orientation, which is interesting. I wonder if I, like, trace it. Okay, yes, it does. So if you, if you graph that, so again, using your window, we went from negative 2 to 2, t-step was 1. If you go to the graph and you hit the trace button, your little targeting cursor will show up there, and you can see that at t equals negative 2, the x-coordinate is 2, the y-coordinate is negative 3, and if you press right, which I know is very counterintuitive because really we want to go left on the graph, but we want to go right because we're advancing time is the idea. We're advancing the parameter. So we advance the parameter to negative 1, and there it shows up the next point, 0 to negative 1. We press right again, it advances the parameter to t equals 0, and it's x equals 0, x equals 1, and you can keep pressing right until you cycle through up until the t equals 2. Okay? So that's the idea there. So you get these, like, fun graphs. All right, if you want, you can then play around with some, right? So you could do, okay, let's do the t minimum negative 4 to 4 and see what happens. And there you see we get, like, you know, something that's not a function there, okay? So that's the idea. <coughs> okay. 
And then if you want, you can do like, I mean, you can do some like really weird stuff here. We could try like, I don't know, and this might be going way beyond things, but like throwing like a cosine of t or something like that. I don't know if it's gonna like do anything interesting or not, but okay, yeah, that's really weird. It's like a banana or something. Let's see here. Uh, let's see if I make it bigger. Yeah, there we go. That's pretty crazy. Let me see if I can make it bigger here yet. Yeah. How about that? That's weird. I'm going to try and do some more steps. Let me do like 0.1 and see if that does it better. There we go. It's a banana. I didn't even know that was going to happen, so <laughs> I'm not going to, you know, but there it is, okay? It's crazy, right? We could change it to like, uh, let's see what happens when I do sign maybe. Okay, there you go, right? It's just crazy stuff. So again, what's happening here, right, is that our y coordinate is dependent on that five sine of t, and so we know sine kind of like, you know, it, um, what do I say, it repeats itself and stuff like that, and so it's going to go from, you know, negative five to five, and then we have that t squared plus t, and that's going to uh, manipulate things around. So I don't know, let me see if I want to change mine. Let me go from like negative 10 to 10 and see what happens here. We could get some really interesting... Okay, I guess, I guess this repeats. <coughs> Let me add in a T here. <coughs> Delete that. Yeah, yeah, okay. So yeah, some very interesting kind of graphs there, right? That we wouldn't otherwise be able to see. I want to see if they will like go bigger or something like that. Spiral out. Maybe not. Okay, I guess it just gets out of control there. Okay, so anyway. But that's the idea. So it's like, wow, crazy stuff that can happen now. Crazy graphs. And it's all dependent on, you know, just how you define those X and Y parameters, or X and Y uh, functions there. We're not going to do anything crazy like those, I promise. It won't be that nice. Okay. It's just very interesting now, how things change. Okay. And in fact, our graphs are pretty much all going to look very similar to those kind of things. So let me have you guys try one here. All right, so y'all try this one here. <coughs> um, graph the parametric equation for negative 2 less than or equal to t less than or equal to 2. Again, I'm just going to keep it between negative 2 and 2. It's nice, you know. You get a good number of points, but not a lot. And we'll say x equals t squared minus 4, <clears throat> and y equals t over 2.
Hm? And don't forget when you are graphing, when you're graphing, to label the time at which you are lo at that location, or at your location there too, because you have that extra parameter now. <clears throat> and include the orientation as well, the direction of your flow there. People were still finishing up there, so I don't want to like.
So, we should have something like that. Okay, for what we've got. And of course, if we wanted to go further in time or further back in time, we could, you know, add to that graph too, but there it is. Okay. Alright. Alright. Questions on any of that? Pretty straightforward. Okay, so some other things we need to be able to do too. So, um, as it turns out, you are able to convert parametric equations into rectangle back into like a rectangular equation. Sometimes, all right, not all the time. Obviously, you know this thing's not going to, or sometimes you can, but it's not always going to be a function. So, for example, you know if we were to rewrite this equation in rectangular form, it's not going to be a function, okay, because you know it fails a vertical line test. But we can still write it in a rectang rectangular form. Okay, so eliminating the parameter is what we call that. Or in other words, converting from parametric to rectangular. Okay. In fact, let's just take that um, previous example here. So let's, you know, for an example here, let's just convert the previous example of the previous parametric equations uh, to rectangular form. To rectangular. I'll just say to rectangular form. Okay, so our original equations we had were x equals t squared minus 4 and y equals t over 2. So the steps are actually pretty straightforward. Again, we want to take these two equations and then rewrite it into a single equation with only x's and y's. And it's actually very simple, okay? So we're going to um, rewrite one equation by solving for t. The parameter here. Okay, so let's take this bottom one, because that one's the easiest one to solve for t, right? And we'll just multiply both sides by 2. So now we have the t is equal to 2y, and x is still equal to the t squared minus 4. <clears throat> All right, and then step 2, substitute into the other equation, or into t for the other equation. Okay, so that t equals 2y will now have x equals 2y, because t is 2y, so this t will just be replaced with 2y squared minus 4. And Voila, now it's a rectangular equation. We've eliminated the parameter. Okay? It's not in a typical form, you know, that we're used to seeing, but it's the parameter's gone. There's no more t, it's just x and x and y. Okay? And so there it is. That's the rectangular equation. So we've converted. And then likewise, we can also convert from rectangular form to parametric form, but that's, we have to have a little bit more information, okay? So. So 
So converting from rectangular to parametric. <coughs> we need some information. <coughs> So we might be asked, for example, to find a set of parametric equations to represent um, y equals 1 minus x squared using the following parameters. <clears throat> okay, because really there's a lot of options. <clears throat> there are some obvious options that we could pick here, but there are a lot of options that we could choose for our two parametric equations that could then result in that single rectangular equation there. <clears throat> there's a lot of options we could have. So we need to have kind of like a set one. So, for example, one parameter we're going to use here, let's just do an example here with, um, let's say our parameter is um, t equals x. <clears throat> or in other words, you know, or we could say our x-coordinate is just the parameter t. <clears throat> you want to go that way. So we already have one of our two parametric equations. We have that the x-coordinates will just be t time. Okay? If that's true, if this is going to be one of our parametric equations, we need to come up with another one that has y equals something in terms of t. All right? So we know that y equals 1 minus x squared, right? But what is x the same as? It's the same as t. And so our other equation is y equals 1 minus t squared. All we have to do is just substitute in t for x because we, we're using this parameter here, that t is the same thing as x, and so there's our y parameter, and there's our x one. It was given to us. <coughs> so that's kind of nice. There's our two parametric equations that will result in this, this exact same rectangular <coughs> form. Okay? But of course, that's like a bit easy, right? Because it's like, well, t is x, okay? We just replace x with t. What if, what if something, what if it's something different? So let's just take a look at another one here. <clears throat> and I'll get you guys started on your homework. All right. So let's say instead of t being equal to x, let's say t is equal to x minus 1. <clears throat> okay. Well, if t is equal to x minus 1, that means our x parametric equation will be what? x equals what? If t is equal to x minus 1, then that means x has to be equal to what? t plus 1. Yeah, you add 1 to both sides. Exactly right. Yeah, you just solve for x there. So there's our first parametric equation. We have 1 already. It's given to us. x equal to t plus 1. Very good. <clears throat> How can we find then the y parametric equation? What should we do? What should we do? We know that y is equal to 1 minus x squared, but we want to come up with y equals something in terms of t. So what can I do with this to get it in terms of t? <clears throat> what can we do here to get this equation now in terms of t? I have y equals, but what can I do here to get that in terms of t instead of x? Done? Exactly right. Yeah, y equals 1 minus the quantity t plus 1 squared. Okay, you can leave it like that if you want, right? You don't need to simplify it out. That's, that's sufficient right there. So there's the other parametric equation. Okay. <clears throat> so there's our pair of parametric equations that results in the same graph as y equals 1 minus x squared. <clears throat> And actually, let's see here if I graph this. So we already kind of know what this is going to look like, right? Um, y equals 1 minus x squared is the same thing as y equals negative x squared plus 1. And so that graph is going to be a parabola that's shifted up 1, but then opens like kind of downward, right, like that. And so if we were to graph this using our parametric stuff here, let's see if I can get it show up. 
So let's do t plus 1, and then 1 minus the quantity t plus 1 squared. And let's make sure here, I'm going to go like so, 6. <clears throat> um, let's see, I need to go to like negative. I don't know why it goes to 2 pi, that's weird. And there it is. Okay, right, there's our parabola. Shift it up 1, and opens downward. So it's the same thing, right? We're graphing the same thing. It's equivalent. Okay, questions on any of that? Okay, good. I wanted to leave you guys time to get started on your homework in class, and I did, so yay. So I'm going to get you guys to start on your assignment here.